The train wheel um, is probably best modeled as a revolve, um, and there's a lot of new skills that are introduced during this, um, including this is probably your, your first complicated revolve, other than uh, something rather simple. So um, let's see. We're, we are going to want to sketch this overall shape here um, and revolve it around a central axis. So let's start by creating a sketch and we can draw it right on the XY plane. That would be fine. And let's get the line tool and let's draw the line up one inch. So I'm going to actually size this as I'm going at 90 degrees and I hit enter so that it locks in that dimension. And then using the line tool, I can actually draw a semicircle. And I want that to be um, dimensioned. And I could have dimensioned that on the fly, but I missed it. I want that to be dimensioned a quarter inch um, as the radius. Actually, that's too thick. The radius would be 0.125. Okay. Um, and then from there, if I get my line tool, I'm going to come straight out a little ways. And I'm going to come up and over. And up and over. And I got that drawn a little bit out of whack. But that's okay because we're going to use some geometric constraints to clean this up. So uh, if I have that size at an eighth of an inch, then I can also dimension this to be a quarter of an inch at the bottom. And then I'll use the collinear constraint because I want this line to line up with this line. So that also um, made it uh, uh, perpendicular at this point. And then, let's see here. Another dimension. Let's go the distance from here to here. Those two lines is 0.125. So that puts that in the middle. And then this edge here should be a quarter inch. And the distance from there up to the second line up here should be 0.75 inches. Okay, and at that point, I could go ahead and finish my sketch and revolve. And of course, I want to revolve around the bottom edge there. So I do have a wheel, um, 360 degrees. There's my overall shape of my wheel. Now, on that, um, we do want to put some fillets. So we could use the push-pull command or the fillet tool but I want to fill it all four of those circles with a radius of a sixteenth of an inch. So then that makes them all kind of smooth out like that. Okay, next um, we'll go ahead and drill a simple hole. So I just pick the surface. We want a simple hole with a diameter of 280 thousandths. And for distance, we should say to the next surface, and we need to center it up on there. So you select reference, select the hole or start moving the hole around and then just pick the circle so it will center it up. So now our hole is centered there. 
Okay, next we want to do a sketch uh, on that back surface. And I want to, I need to be careful with this because if I place my center point right here, it's going to be on the line there because see it's kind of following that circular edge and it won't be the right distance. So I want to kind of be kind of tricky with this. I'm going to come way outside and let's size that peg to be a quarter inch diameter. Um, let's use some geometry. So I'm going to do horizontal or vertical and let's put that so it lines up with the origin. So you see that's going to jump down and then we'll dimension that to be 0.7 inches from the center. So you see that moves it over and that's why I kind of drew it outside because I wanted to make sure I was not constrained to one of those other tangent lines because that would cause a problem. Okay, and now that that's there, I need to select both those profiles and come out 3 eighths of an inch. That needs to be a join operation. Um, we need another sketch on that surface. Uh, we can draw a circle, and I drew it out here, off-centered on purpose. When we were lining up holes, what we were actually doing, uh, Fusion has a concentric tool, and when you're drilling a hole, it automatically knows to do that. Well, this time, um, we need to force it to be concentric. So let's make that circle be concentric with that one. And it doesn't want to go. Not sure why. Might be constrained to something else. Okay, so now we want to draw a circle. Um, and since I want it to be centered on that cylinder that we've already built for the peg, make sure it's centered. 0.125 inch diameter and of course my lines turn black so I know I'm fully constrained. We need to extrude that 0.125 inches and then we need to drill a hole on that surface um, 0.125 inches deep and 0.0625 inches, 16th of an inch in diameter. Um, in order to center that point up, pick the hole, pick the outside edge, make sure that that hole is centered. Again, if you are not centered on that peg, and if this peg is not built in the right location, and if the wheel is not centered, your train will not drive down the track. Okay, now once we have that, um, then we want to make some type of a spoke pattern. And you are welcome to kind of design your own. So that's kind of what I like to do. I'm going to come in and I'm going to draw a lightning bolt of some kind. Okay, so uh, you can design your own spoke pattern. I'm going to do a cut extrusion. Uh, distance 2. So this is one of the places you get to be creative on this project. And then under uh, Create, there's Pattern Tools. And we want a circular pattern. So first we got to select 
what we want to pattern, I'm going to pick the feature, which was that last cut extrusion. And then the axis to rotate around, you got to pick a circle. And then you can pick how many you want to have. Well, that'll make three of them. Um, we could try six. We could try eight. The one thing we do have to be careful with is we don't want these to run into my peg. So that's the only thing uh, when you're modeling this, make sure that it doesn't run into the peg or um, even kind of worse than that. If I pick like 80 of them, you know, that'll do that. Oh, it says too many pattern instances. Yeah, because it, see it cuts all that away. So it says consider, you, consider changing your pattern. So that's too many. So and, and even you might have to play with the spacing on things because you don't want your pattern for your, your wheels to run into your peg and have a cut that's behind where this peg is. So let's say I wanted those to be closer together. Um, I could do say 15, let's see, what would that look like? I could do 15 lightning bolts, but uh, only do them um, 345 degrees. And that still didn't quite fix it. So, you know, that's something that uh, if I was really making this, I would need to take care of that because I don't want to cut to weaken the back of my peg.